when rail was a dominant transportation network, uh, both into Western Canada and also to the U U.S., um, Winnipeg was kind of the staging area to build the rest of the railway and make the connection to the U.S. Winnipeg became a manufacturing center for buses and farm equipment and you know New Holland there, they got John Deere there, they got new flyer buses and they make uh, articulated buses for most cities in North America and around the world. They probably didn't realize that part of the reason that they were successful was shipping, you know, parts coming in and parts going out. And fully assembled machinery uh, being distributed different parts, tide waters to the east, tide waters to the west, and also to the south to the U.S. Infrastructure and everything was built for that 500,000 people that arrived in that part of the world in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Now there would have been more people there for manufacturing purposes if the big strike never would have happened, they were the sacrificial lamb for, for business in general because that was the first and last gigantic strike where people died and for their worker rights. So that could have happened in Chicago, it could have happened in any other city, but it happened there. At that time, Winnipeg was probably as big as Chicago and much bigger than Minneapolis. Subsequently in the 20s and things were really going, Winnipeg got bypassed for Chicago to, you know, distribute agricultural products, you know, meat and, uh, and grain and everything and then Minneapolis stepped in as well. And so when you miss your opportunity at that particular time, 19, in the 20s, you miss it for a long time. It's not a, it's not a five year event. It's a 50 to 100 year event. It's now Winnipeg's turn. It's a growth area. It has opportunity. That's where things come and go. And it's a fix. And that, that fix and that distribution point, you gotta have a million people. And so you start putting a million people and a bunch of more companies there. There's plenty of room for it. And frankly, growth will help the city. The airport there, that's an international airport. It's got lots of space. It's got room to be a significant player internationally. Winnipeg's got all this infrastructure. They're connected to a rail that goes all the way to Argentina. And that's an amazing thing. It doesn't have to go on any ships. It doesn't have to be lifted and changed and moved. Opportunities there, but the awareness is not other parts of North America and the world don't know about Winnipeg. So it's a matter of people coming in like us who understand the interconnectivity in North America and globally and understand and can pitch the merits of Winnipeg itself. Uh, they haven't been in the mix and they haven't been at the table and being either inviting themselves to pitch their city or having, being invited. The more identity and panache you bring to a city, the better and more powerful people you can attract to come and live there, or visit there, or do business there. You gotta provide education, you gotta provide transportation and access, and Winnipeg has that. Within an hour drive, you're in the lake country there, and you can buy a beautiful piece of land on any lake and have a lake cottage. Well, that's like dying going to heaven. You can make that city be whatever you want it to be. I was absolutely invited uh, as the number one candidate for that project. Well, that's what's happening now with bigger sites, whether it's a Deerfoot Meadows or this 15 tower project here or a great big industrial park that's got infrastructure and it needs a vision, and needs a focus, it needs somebody who knows how to initiate, tell the story before it happens. You know, we're not just promoting a park, you know, we're promoting the city, we're promoting the country. The market is, is North America and the world. 
everybody in every town needs new people with new thinking and how to expand uh, their reach and their vision, their opportunity. Yeah. It's all there, except somebody has to seek it and point it out. So that's why I call it an awareness and opportunity campaign.